It was not by chance that this struggle came to be. The blame falls squarely upon my shoulders for giving evil the chance it needed, and therefore fulfilling an ancient prophecy. Raiden's Earthrealm champions had failed to stop the Deadly Alliance from fully resurrecting the mummified army of the Dragon King. In the end, only Raiden himself stood between Earthrealm and total destruction. Defying the Elder God's wishes, he alone challenged Quan Chi and Shang Tsung in mortal combat, Earthrealm's last hope for freedom. sorcerers, and it seemed as though victory was at hand. But the combined might of Quan Chi and Shang Tsung proved to be overwhelming, even for a thunder god. Raiden was defeated. The Deadly Alliance had won. Their victory was short-lived. As suspicion and lust for power overcame both Quan Chi and Shang Tsung, the former allies turned on each other. The deadly alliance was no more. defeated Shang Tsung and reveled in his conquest. But it is said that there is only one true ruler of Outworld. And that ruler had returned. destroy this threat, born of deception.
Noob Saibot was not originally a demon, which might explain why Ashra sent such great evil in him. He had to earn his place in the Nether Realm. He actually desired to remain there. His companion, however, seemed to be having a problem adjusting. Perhaps there was some good left in the cyborg. Whatever the case, Noob would have to face Ashra alone. Ashra defeated Noob Saibot and finally earned her ascension from the Nether Realm. But the sword that made her escape possible did not travel with her. I suspect it still remains in the Nether Realm, waiting to release another of its denizens from damnation. Baraka assumed that the treacherous Melena had given her armies a powerful magic. They fought with savage brutality, but he could not stop their advance. He vowed that Melina would pay for her betrayal. Baraka's warriors brought word that she had agreed to meet with him in an ancient lair, but Baraka was no fool. He sent another in his place. Baraka's scouts reported that the Earthrealm warrior Sub-Zero was near. He allowed his remaining militia to deal with him and set off alone to ambush Melina. He knew by the scent of Tarkatan blood on her clothes that she had already killed the one he had sent to meet her. But her sense of smell was not as keen as a true Tarkata's. She was unaware of Baraka's presence. He barked her name, and when she turned to face him, he tore her apart. Onaga seemed invincible. The races of Outworld were in disagreement over how to deal with this threat, and Baraka's hordes were sweeping the land. Boraicho had almost given up hope when he was visited by the spirit of his greatest student, Liu Kang. Their roles now reversed. Liu Kang gave Boraicho the inspiration necessary to continue the fight. Boraicho's soul was invigorated. He met with Outworld's many leaders to forge a temporary truce. Kitana gave him command of what remained of her army, and he led them to battle against Baraka's mutant foot soldiers. The new army of Outworld crushed the Tarkata vermin, and Baraka himself was bested by Boraicho's attack. The victory inspired the people of Outworld to rise up against the Dragon King. Normally, Dairu took no risks and ambushed those he had been hired to kill. But in this case, he felt compelled to announce his intentions to kill his fellow guardsman, Hotaru. There still must have been some code of honor left in his cynical heart. Hotaru was defeated, but before Dairu could reveal who had commissioned the attack, Hotaru drew his dying breath. The mercenary Dairu had succeeded in stealing the Declaration of Order and was paid many coins for his efforts. After Darius hid the document, he announced its capture to the world and heralded a new beginning for the realm of Sado. As Darius had predicted, officials were outraged that the Resistance had stolen the most prized possession of the Sadan government. Hotaru was ordered to lead the charge against them. He underestimated their numbers, however, and the Resistance defeated him and his men. The Senate would soon be in the hands of the revolutionaries. In an outer chamber of the Dragon King's throne room, Ermac did battle with Liu Kang's enslaved comrades. Ermac was more than a match for the five warriors, but their defeat was not his objective. Liu Kang materialized and one by one freed their souls while Ermac occupied the rest. Eventually, all five were awakened from their enchantment and freed from Onaga's control. Ermac was pleased that his warrior's skills could for once bring about a noble outcome. He sensed, however, that an ominous force still shaped the destiny of the realms. It was everywhere. He could feel its influence on Onaga, though the Dragon King was oblivious to its manipulation. Time was running out. Ermac feared the celebration of this latest victory would be short-lived. The others had defeated the Dragon King, but left his broken body unattended on the floor of his throne room. Not long ago, a similar fate had befallen his former advisor, Shao Kahn. Havoc ripped the still warm heart from the carcass and consumed it, thus absorbing Onaga's power to reanimate the dead. 
Had the Dragon King succeeded in his plans for total domination, the never-ending turmoil of life would have come to a stifling halt. Those who defeated him believed that the realms were at rest once more, but Havoc vowed to restore the chaos that once ravaged Outworld. Shao Kahn would rule again. In the wilds of Outworld, Hotaru captured the renegade Earthrealm warrior Sub-Zero and brought him before the Dragon King. Onaga's judgment of Sub-Zero was swift, and Hotaru was given the task of carrying out his punishment. Death. His fate served as a reminder to all who would challenge the authority of the Dragon King. The traitor Tanya had given the Dragon King the information he needed to finish merging the Kamidogu. But before he conquered all the realms, Jade would see Tanya dead. Jade had allowed Baraka's soldiers to capture her, feigning defeat in battle. As Tanya approached her prisoner, Jade waited for the right moment, and threw a glass orb filled with concentrated Tarkata essence at her. The glass broke, splashing its contents across Tanya's body. Baraka and his vile savages worked themselves into an uncontrolled frenzy. They perceived Tanya to be a rival male and instinctively attacked. I doubt she survived the encounter. Havoc had given Cabal's new black dragon recruits a task. Lure the heroes away from the Dragon King's corpse while he somehow retrieved the heart. And with it, Onaga's power to raise the dead. Apparently, Onaga's ancient army had only been invincible by means of constant resurrection during battles. The power to raise the dead would prove quite useful to the Black Dragon clan. Cabal slew Havoc and took the Dragon King's heart for himself. Havoc was most impressed. <laughs> 